Now before we start, you'll notice I have defined a random variable x. Let x be the random variable number of customers who buy an item. And I've said that x is distributed binomially. And the reason I've said that it's a binomial distribution is because assuming that events buying an item occurs at random, that there's a finite number of trials, 30 customers. You'll have two outcomes per trial. A customer will either buy an item or not. And we'll assume that buying an item is independent and probabilities remain constant. So we've got a binomial model here. Now we've got to state our hypothesis clearly. And the shopkeeper before refurbishment claimed that 15% of the customers bought an item. So let's just put the null hypothesis H0 is that the probability P of buying an item, the proportion if you like, that buy an item we're told was 15%. So it's going to be 0.15. Now when the shopkeeper carries out a sample on 30 customers, he finds that only one customer now, that's our observed value, buys an item. Now, he's thinking, well, okay, the uh, proportion then has changed. So we've got H1 is that P does not equal 0.15. Now, we've got to do a hypothesis test at the 5% level of significance. So, I'm going to put alpha equals 5%. But because we've got not equal to here, it's going to be a two-tailed test. What that means, essentially, if I can just draw a diagram like I usually do with questions like this, is that we've got a binomial model going from 0 all the way up to 30. Now, the shopkeeper can expect if 0 0.15, 15% of the customers buy an item, out of 30 people he can expect 30 times 0 0.15, NP if you like. NP, 30 times 0.15, comes to 4.5, so he can expect 4.5 customers generally buying an item. But as I say, he's only found one. So we've got a situation where, okay, we can expect something around the 4.5, but we've got a critical value here, say, let's call it R. This critical value is a point where if we're below it, then we reject HO. And if we're above it, we accept HO. Now, we've got one which is less than 4.5. So it's the rejection region. We have to do a two-tailed test. We're going to be splitting this in half at 2.5%. So what happens is that we're going to reject HO. There's two ways that we can look at this, actually, by working out the critical value, we can re reject HO if the probability of X being less than or equal to that critical value R, given that the null hypothesis is true, that is P equals 0.15, turns out to be less than 2.5%, 0.025 in other words. That's one way of doing this, let's just mark that with a 1. The other way of doing this is to work out the probability of getting a value less than or equal to 1. And we would reject HO if the probability, let's just put OR here, or the probability that X is less than or equal to that observed value of 1, given that P equals 0.15, that HO is true, turns out to be less than 2.5%, 0.025. That's our second method. And you can choose whichever one of these you want to. Now, I'll go through the 
first method and then the second one, okay, for you, and you can decide which one you'd prefer. So we'll look at method one. Okay, method one. So for method one, we'll just copy it down here. The probability that x is less than or equal to this critical value r, given that p equals 0.15. Okay, we're going to check out what it would be if we say that that probability is less than 2.5%, 0.025. Now, because we're looking up less than or equal to a given value, then we can use our cumulative binomial distribution tables. These are tables that give us the probability of x being less than or equal to a given value. So all you've got to do is look up p equaling 0.15, and under n equals 30, you're going to have a list of observed values with their associated probabilities of being less than or equal to your observed value. So from tables, we're looking for the value of r that gives us a probability as close as we can get to 0.025, but less than it. Well, clearly you can see that from the tables, it's this one here okay, 0 0.0076. The next one is greater than 0 0.025. So that gives us this value here, x equals 0. So we can say that from tables, okay, that our critical value r has to be equal to 0, the value here. And since, we can say therefore since, that our observed value x, which equals 1, is greater than the critical value 0, then although, as I've drawn it here, 1 would now be in this acceptable region. This value of r goes right the way back to 0. Obviously, I didn't know that at the time that I sketched this, but we can now see that this would go back to 0, and our observed value 1 would be in this acceptable region. So it's not significant. So we'd write a statement something like this, that it's not significant, except HO, that is that that proportion P is 15% or 0.15. And so there's no evidence of a change in the proportion of customers buying an item from the display. Now I did say that I'd run through method two for you, so we'll just do that in here. If we're looking at method two, okay, method two, how's this going to work? Well, for method two, we can work out from tables straight away the probability of x being less than or equal to the observed value one given that HO is true, that is P equals 0.15, we can find out what it is, because when we look it up on here, you can see we've got one here, and that probability is 0.0480 for one. Okay, so from the tables, we can see it's 0 0.0480. And how does that compare to 0.025, 2.5%. Well, clearly it's greater. It's greater than 0.025. And we would say, we said we would reject the null hypothesis, HO, if that probability were less than 0 0.025. Well, clearly it's not. So therefore, we arrive at exactly the same result, okay, that it's not significant, except HO, proportion p is 0.15. Okay, so uh, two methods for you. You can choose which one you like to use. Um, it's totally up to you. If you're doing this question exams, they don't mind which way you use. Okay.